love. Ladies and gentlemen, love is the human family's most precious legacy, its richest bequest, its golden inheritance, and it is a treasure that is handed down from one generation to the other. Previous ages may not have had the wealth we enjoy. Their houses may have lacked electricity, and they squeezed their many kids into small homes without central heating. But those homes had no darkness, nor were they cold. They were lit bright with the glow of love, and they were warmed snugly by the very heat of the human heart. Parents, undistracted by the lust for luxury and status, accorded their children's primacy in their lives. As you all, as you all know, as you all know, our two countries broke from each other over what Thomas Jefferson referred to as certain inalienable rights. While we Americans and British might dispute the justice of his claims, what was never in dispute is that children have certain obvious rights, and the gradual erosion of those rights has led to scores of children worldwide being denied the joys and security of childhood. I would therefore like to propose tonight that we install in every home a Children's Universal Bill of Rights, the tenets of which are, one, the right to be loved without having to earn it, two, the right to be protected without having to deserve it, three, the right to feel valuable even if you came into the world with nothing, four, the right to be listened to without having to be interested. Five, the right to be read a bedtime story without having to compete with the evening news or East Enders. <laughs> the right, number six, the right to an education without having to dodge bullets at schools. The right to be thought of, this is number seven, Seven, the right to be thought of as adorable, even if you have a face that only a mother could love. <laughs> Friends, the foundation of all human knowledge, the beginning of human consciousness, must be that each and every one of us is an object of love. Before you know it, before you know if you have red hair or brown, before you know if you are black or white, before you know of what religion you are a part of, you have to know that you are loved. About 12 years ago, when I was just about to start my bad tour, a little boy came with his parents to visit me at my California home. He was dying of cancer, and he told me how much he loved me and my music. His parents told me that he wasn't going to live, that any day he could just go. And I said to him, look, I'm going to be coming to your hometown in Kansas to start my tour in three months. I want you to come to the show. I'm going to give you this jacket that I wore in one of my videos. His eyes lit up. He said, you're going to give me the jacket? I said, yes, I'm going to give you the jacket. But you have to promise me that you will wear it to the show. I was trying to make him hold on. I said, when you come to the show, I want to see you in this jacket and in this glove. And I gave him one of my rhinestone gloves, which I never give to anyone. <laughs> and he was just in heaven. But maybe he was too close to heaven. Because when I came to his town, he had already died. And they had buried him in the glove and the jacket. He was just 10 years old. God knows, and I know, that he tried his best to hold on. But at least when he died, he knew that he was loved not only by his parents, but even by me. As a near stranger, I also loved him. In which all of that love, with all of that love, he knew that he didn't come into this world alone, and he certainly didn't leave it alone. If you enter this world knowing you are loved, and you leave this world knowing the same, then everything that happens in between can be dealt with. A professor may degrade you, but you will not feel degraded. A boss may crush you, but you will not be crushed. 
a corporate gladiator might vanquish you, but you will still triumph. How could any of them, any of them truly prevail in pulling you down? For you know that you are an object worthy of love. The rest is just packaging. If you don't have that memory of being loved, you are condemned to search the world for something to fill you up. But no matter how much money you make or how famous you become, you will still feel empty. What you are really searching for is unconditional love, unqualified acceptance. And that was the one thing that was denied to you at birth. Friends, let me paint a picture for you. Here is a typical day in America. Six youth under the age of 20 will commit suicide. 12 children under the age of 20 will die from firearms. Remember, this is a day, not a year. 399 kids will be arrested for drug abuse. 1,352 babies will be born to teen mothers. This is happening in one of the richest, most developed countries in the history of the world. Yes, in my country, there's an epidemic of violence that parallels no other industrialized nation. These are the ways young people in America express their hurt and their anger. But don't think that there is not the same pain and anguish among their counterparts in the United Kingdom. Studies in this country show that every single hour, three teenagers in the UK inflict harm upon themselves, often by cutting or burning themselves, burning their bodies, or taking an overdose. This is how they have chosen to cope with the pain of neglect and emotional agony. In Britain, as many as 20% of families will only sit down and have dinner together once a year. Once a year. And what about the time-honored tradition of reading your kids a bedtime story? Research from the 1980s showed that children who are read to had far greater literacy and significantly outperformed their peers at school. And yet, less than 33% of British children ages 2 to 8 have a regular bedtime story read to them. You may not think much of that until you take into account that 75% of their parents did have that bedtime story when they were that age. <coughs> Clearly, we do not have to ask ourselves where all of this pain and anger violent behavior comes from. It is self-evident that children are thundering against the neglect, quaking against the indifference, and crying out just to be noticed. The various child protection agencies in the U.S. say that Millions of children are victims of maltreatment in the form of neglect in the average year. Yes, neglect. In rich homes, privileged homes, wired to the hilt with every electronic gadget. <coughs> homes where parents come home, but they're not really home because their heads are stood at the office. And their kids, well, their kids just make you with whatever emotional crumbs they get. And you don't just get much from watching a lot of television and computer games and videos. These hard code numbers, which for me, wrench the soul and shake the spirit, should indicate to you why I have de why I've developed so much of my time and resources into making our new Heal the Kids initiative a colossal success. Our goal is simple, to recreate the parent child bond to renew its promise and light the way forward for all the beautiful children who are destined one day to walk this earth but since this is my first public lecture and you have so warmly welcomed me into your hearts i feel that i want to tell you more we each have our own story and in that sense statistics can become personal <laughs> 